Okay, this Maimer was delivered by the Rebbe on Shabbos, a parsha that was double header, Bahar and Bukhukesai. The year was Tafshin Mem Gimel, which corresponds to 1983. And it opens with the words that herald the second parsha, Im Bukhukesai Te Lechel, if you will walk in my statutes, etc. Then Asati Gishmechem Beitam, what the Almighty promises, I will provide rainfall in its proper time. Vigoymer, etc., all kinds of extraordinary blessings unfold. Vigoymer, hadiyuk etc. So there is a well-known, precise, exacting analysis of these words. And that is, Mahu inyan imbechu koisei telechu. Why is it that we begin with this notion, this idea of chukoisei, my statutes? Delecha'ira, ostensibly speaking, inyan chukoisei, my statutes represent chukim statutes. Kemaimer Azal, this kind of brings to mind the saying of our sages, which is brought down in the Medrash. And Rashi quotes it at the beginning of Parshas Chukas. Chuka chokakti, gzeiro gezarti, ve'en l'choreshus lahar racharel. Here's a statute, says God, that I have established, a decree that I have delivered, you have no permission to double uh, guess or to kind of rethink or to wonder or contemplate. It's not for you to think about, says God. Here is the way it's going to be. End of story. Chuka. That's it. Hainu. Shahu inyan ha chuka That this is something which focuses primarily on the action that has to be taken. This has nothing to do with contemplation. This has nothing to do with understanding or comprehension. This has to do with, so it is written, so it shall be. So I said, so you shall do. End of story. That's what Pasha's Chukas is about. That's the, of, the idea of a Chukas is about. Vim Cain, so what's the question? All right, so that's, that's the relationship with God. <laughs> he says, we listen. But Vim Cain, so, Eich Omar Bazet Telechu. How does it say telechu? Telechu means to go forward. Hamoira, which is indicative, al inyan hahalicha. This represents the idea of going for, forward, of traveling, of aliyah, going madrega le madrega, lifting itself from one level to the next. Vahare, be inyan hamaisa, if we talk about action, and this is the kind of mitzvah that's action oriented, kiyom achukim atzam, the fulfillment of chukim, you can't, you can't do it more. You can understand it in a more profound way. You can relate to it in a deeper way. You can't do it differently. The doing, the action, is always going to be the same. There's a famous paradigm for this. The Chol Yisrael, that every single member of this nation called Israel, from Moses, the greatest of the great, until the simplest and most ordinary of people, that might live at the very edge of the generations, they're all putting on the same tefillin. And it has four compartments, and it's got parshias, it's got little portions of the Torah written in a precise fashion, and there's no difference. They didn't say Moshe Rabbeinu put on bigger tefillin, nicer tefillin necessarily, different tefillin. He had five parshias. He had extra compartments, supersonic tefillin. Tefillin, not tefillin, not tefillin. That's what it is. It's very square. It's very black. It's very plain. That's the way it's done. So there really is no difference. If you were to kind of analyze the ages, what will you see? You'll see people doing the same thing. There's no telechu. There's no development. There's no growth. The fact that there are various levels in mitzvahs. A person could say, once upon a time, in my early years, one might say, I fulfilled the mitzvahs in rote fashion, maybe even habitual. And then, well, then he started to learn and then he started to develop in his Yiddishkeit, and then he started to become a little more broad-minded. And then, all of a sudden, the fulfillment of mitzvahs was done in a more profound way, and then he grew in the arena of heart, mind, and soul, of the kind of feeling and fervor he invested in mitzvahs. 
That's where the notion of various levels might apply. If it's various levels, if you could have various levels, if you could look at a, Jew, a group of 50 people who are doing the same mitzvah, and each one of them does it and invests a different level of fervor, so I say, okay, I have 50 people doing the same mitzvah in a different way. And then I might say that even any one of those people could grow from level to level because if there could be different madregas, different people doing it at any given time, then it would be possible for everybody and anybody to wax and to grow and to develop within their fervor, within their commitment, within their devotion, within their dedication, within their kavana intention when they perform a mitzvah. But if you look at the mitzvah itself, the action of the mitzvah, <laughs> action is action is action. The action doesn't change. From, from the child does a mitzvah to the teenager who does a mitzvah to somebody middle age somebody in their old age a mitzvah is a mitzvah <laughs> the action is the action you can't you can't hold a little of an esrog differently so what, what is the meaning of this in and of itself strikes us as oxymoronic on one hand on one hand mitzvahs which emphasize action on the other hand to develop to go forward to wax to grow how does that seem to, to, to square how does that jive together how does halicha, how does that verb fit this noun? Here's something else we, we, we really should try to understand. We know that there are different kinds of mitzvahs. We've talked about this ad infinitum almost. Eidos, chukim, mishpatim, mitzvahs that are testimonial in nature, mitzvahs that are statutes, and mitzvahs that are ordinances. Rhyme, reason, rationale apply. Why is it that here, when we speak about Yiddishkeit itself, broadly speaking, we are referencing Yiddishkeit, even though in Pshut Shomikar on a literal level, we could you know, argue what exactly this Pasuk means, and what, what specifically this word earmarks. But broadly speaking, it's talking about Yiddishkeit. And it's talking about the idea of you do what you're supposed to do, what Hashem says he does, what he's supposed to do. So Hashem says, you do your part, I do my part. And what is the your part called? Chukim. In fact, the way Rashi explains it, it says, is not speaking about something independent. It's speaking about toiling and toiling according to Rashi. The S, it's doesn't mean I toil and toiling and I do mitzvahs. It means that I toil and toiling, the toil and toiling should be action-oriented. In a direction where I want to do mitzvahs as a result of the Torah that I'm learning. Okay, moving to the Shashi, as Rashi says, Shitu Amela Matera. And then Vitzvitzvay say Tishmeru, Inshallah, Oh, Matera, Zarahli, Almanas Lishmer Lakayim. In other words, according to Rashi, the words, that represents the action we must take. Vitzvitzvay say Tishmeru is only talking about the kind of action we must take. It defines the kind of approach to that action. But the action we take is Bukhukais Telechu. That the primary thrust, the main message is Inyan Bechukaisa Telecho. The Inyan Bechukaisa. The Inyan Etzvaisa Tishmru, only a Tetza. That's only a tributary of the primary direction and flow. Why? Why is it that Yiddishkeit suddenly becomes encapsulated with the terminology, with the description of Bechukaisa, which means the idea of statutes? Mitzvahs which? Have no other reason, misses which we necessarily do not understand and appreciate. Finally, as the parsha continues to unfold, in if you follow my statutes for the sati gishmechem bito, I will give the proper rainfall in its rightful times. Says our kaddish baruch hu. Shaparsha zu medaberes binyan haschara la mitzvus. Here's a parsha that if somebody would say, so what's it about? What would you say? Reward for mitzvus. That's the simple. The simple synopsis is that a whole beginning of the parsha speaks about the reward for mitzvahs. This itself needs to be understood. Why is it that here the Torah hinges the performance of mitzvahs to the idea of giving reward? One might say, Shaskar Sibo Musubov. That the schar is not Hashem going to give you reward. That's the natural result. Clean living results in good health. This is an organic result of the fulfillment of mitzvahs. 
Not as if Hashem promises you, here's what you, you do your part and I'll do my part. No, here's what would happen automatically. If if only you'll do what I'm expecting of you, then naturally, Yishmechim will become Be'itam, then the rainfall will come naturally in its proper times. The truth is you can't say that. Why can't you say that? Because the Torah itself says otherwise. How? The Torah says, Im lechel, What's the next word? Vinasati. Vinasati means, I will give. I will give means not it will happen, not it will unfold, I will give. And we know that the idea of Vinasati means Hashem's giving you reward. The word Vinasati is Bederach Skula. The word Vinasati is, in fact, it's related to the Hebrew word Matana, of a gift. Why is it that the reward for mitzvahs then is Yehudim Gashmim, is natural, material rewards? Shouldn't we be getting heavenly rewards? Shouldn't the mitzvahs be more valuable than a little rainfall, than a, than a spoonful of sugar? Shouldn't the mitzvahs have greater virtue than just material payback? I mean, that's an obvious question. So here is a kernel of explanation. Like kind of like a, a loftier, larger way to understand the whole picture. And when we have an elevated perspective, many of the questions that were articulated will simply dissolve. Why? Because the only reason we have these questions is because we have a little, limited understanding of what's actually being discussed. Once we have an elevated, a rarefied understanding, once the Rebbe elevates our perspective, so naturally, many of these questions just fall away. So that's why you can say, talk about a nekud of a beer. You don't have to give six different answers. A nekud of a beer means, here's a kernel of an idea. And once you get this kernel of an idea, once you get the kernel, once you get the essence, it elevates your perspective. And then, naturally the questions will simply dissolve and fall away. So, The kernel of the idea is, don't look at bichu kaisai only as chuka. But rather, read into that word, gam miloshin chakika. Read into that word, engraved. Engraved. Dehine. What does this mean? Batsino Bateira, we find with regard to the Torah and its Nisinosali Yisrael, it's being given to the people of Israel. Kama Vakama Dargis. We find many levels. This is what's called Tehri Shabachsav, is the scripture. This Tehri Shabalped is the oral Torah, oral teaching. This Aseris Hadibris. We even have the ten statements, which are said to incorporate or include. And then finally, we have this idea of the luchis, of the tablets of stone. That's also part of the Torah. That's a major part of the Torah. Not just the ideas as they were stated, but the actual tablets of stone that were given to us. Even though the entire Torah was given from Mount Sinai, the whole written Torah, the whole oral Torah, Haikalel is called Mashatam Vasagasalakhadish, which includes all of the novelty that we stumble upon through our efforts in the future. That too is already given Lamesha Misinai, which is actually a message that precedes Parshas Bhukhaisa and Parshas Bahar, Bahar Sinai. Klolisel Pratasa, all the details were said at Sinai. Bikal Makim, Ainza Daimil Inyan Hatera Hachakubiluchas. You cannot compare an oral idea that only shows up in a Mishnah. To the concept of something which is engraved in the luchas. The ikir inyan achakika, the primary essence, the primary idea, motif of engraving, as is explained elsewhere, is in the luchas of the shenis dafka, specifically in the first set of tablets that were tragically broken. The So what then is the difference between words that were engraved on tablets of stone by God and ideas that were passed down from generation to generation? The Betelah Shabal Peh in the oral Torah, Hini Ha'odom Hamedaber, Vahatoyre Shamedaber, the person who is speaking, or even the Torah that the person is speaking, Him Beis Dvarim Nifradim. There are two separate things. There is the Torah ideas, there is the student of Torah who is identifying with, articulating, and sharing these words of Torah. But ultimately, the Torah exists in independence of the person who is studying, who is knowledgeable, who is sharing the words of Torah. Torah is a Torah, it's a Torah idea. You can absorb this Torah idea. You can absorb it in a very profound way. You can even discover novelty in it. You can share it, but ultimately the Torah and you are two separate realities. 
Even with a book, a scroll of scripture, a Sefer Torah, which is written by a specially trained, trained scribe and it's written on material, actual parchment. Then what happens is that the letters and the Sefer Torah, they become one. So it's not a separate thing anymore. It is a Sefer Torah. There was a time that the ink and the letters were separate. There was a time that the letters were ink in a bottle. There was a time that parchment was just empty parchment waiting to be written. And then a time when the words of the Torah were actually written onto the parchment. How did the ink and the parchment get married? Had they come together? They had a shadchan. Who brought them together? The cipher. It's been my say the It's through the efforts of humanity. Because, precisely because it's through the efforts of humanity that it comes together. Precisely because it was brought together by humanity, precisely for the same reason it's possible for it to be divided and separated. In the letters that were engraved on the Luchis. Even though before Hashem engraved the words onto the stone, even though once upon a time they were two separate realities, through the engraving, it becomes one thing. You cannot erase letters that are engraved. Certainly not when they're engraved from one end to the other, through and through, especially we say about the luchas that were engraved from one aver, from one side to the other. So it wasn't, you couldn't even router off the outer layer of stone. The only way to erase the words of the luchas was by smashing them, which Moshe Bede actually did. In other words, as long as the luchas are, the letters will be there. The only way the letters won't be there is if the luchas are no, no longer. So there is no real or even imaginary difference between the stone and between the letters. The letters and the stone are one. The letters and the stone together comprise the same entity. One destroyed means the other destroyed. You cannot destroy one without the other. You can't remove one without the other. So we're talking about levels of Torah. We're talking about a part of the Torah which is an, an, an additive. Two different things which are fused together, brought together, or something which is intrinsically one. And chuka, chakika means that which is intrinsically one. Ubira So what does this mean? You know, in Hasidus we have very deep ideas, lofty, mystical, spiritual, disciplined ideas. I said, what does it mean? What does it mean? It's very nice. What does it mean to me? Not what it means academically. How does it affect our lives? What is it, how does it talk to us? There are times that the unity that the person might feel or experience with the Torah, shalom that he learns, or the mitzvahs, the mitzvahs that he or she fulfills, when they are like things we do, I'm connecting to it. There is this notion and I'm connecting. I'm relating to it. It's something which is outside of me. So he named it when we talk about the essence of all of righteousness. What's the most important ingredient of all? Free choice. Bechira, the ability to choose. So when it comes to Bechira, as it says later on in the Torah, Hashem says, I provide for you today life in the opposite of life and you have to choose. It's possible for there to be a distinction drawn between them. It's possible you will do the mitzvahs. It's possible you won't do the mitzvahs. Then Then there's a loftier approach to Havadis Hashem. That the person serves God. But you know how he serves God? He serves God like a rock. Tablet-like. He serves God engraved. His service to God is one. That his unison, his coming together is oneness with Tere Mitzvahs. It's in a way that it becomes one thing. And you cannot draw a distinction between them. Impossible to make a distinction. So this is the meaning in Avedis Hashem of learning Torah, doing mitzvahs, living your Yiddishkeit in the manner of Chakika means it becomes one with you. That your existence is inseparable from your devotion to Torah. It's not that there's me and then there's the Torah I learn. There's I and the mitzvahs I do. No, no, no. It's one. I and the mitzvahs I do are one. 
I, I am not without Torah mitzvahs. It's not a question of to do. It's a question of to be or not to be. Not to do or not to do. And to be or not to be, this is the idea of the achtos. This is, means that the Torah mitzvahs is engraved on my soul like a rock. Now we'll understand why our sages said, there's this decree which is issued, the, 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 a, 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 a statute which is given, and you cannot have no permission to think about it, to contemplate it. The Yeshleimer, HaKavar Abba the Rebbe says, on a nuanced level, the intention here is the Mikivin Shachakuka, who is Achdos Be'etzma Nefesh, because Chakika represents such a deep and profound oneness with whatever is being involved with, in a way of chakika, like engraved on the soul. It's not something about you can think about. Thoughts are ever-changing. Our mind is constantly moving at such a swift pace. But here it's, you cannot double guess, second guess, think again. It's nothing that we think. This is a oneness, a certain oneness. This oneness is, it's impossible any other way. So people say to you, would you like to do X, Y, and Z? And what's your response? Let me think about it. Maybe. I have to see. Maybe I'll do it. I don't know. But then there's something which is one with you. You don't have to think about it. So do you want to live or die? So let, let, me, let, let me think about it. I'm not sure. What is that famous joke? Your money, your life? Can I think about it for a few minutes? It's nothing to think about. What's the, what's the thing? That's the money of your life. What's money if there's no life? It's, it's one with you. So Yiddish has to become one with you to the point it's not that there's I, whoever I am, and I have my own reality, and that is a mitzvah I do. Okay, that, that means there's, I can think about it. There's, what's, there's what to talk about, what to think about. So, would you like to do this mitzvah? Are you ready to do this mitzvah? What if you have this kind of reward? What if you're going to get offered a lot of money? What if you're going to offer fame and power? Would you rethink it? Would you maybe abandon it? Maybe, you know, I don't know. Hopefully I'll have the strength to pass the test. Or there's a level of commitment to devotion. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean? This is me. It's like, come to you, money of your life. You want to keep tater mitzvahs? You don't want to keep tater mitzvahs. What do you mean? Would I want or not? There's something to think about? There's no Rishus Laharachah. It's not possible even to contemplate. It's nothing to think about. This is who I am. End of story. And that's the meaning of the Mechukais HaTelechu then. The meaning of the Mechukais HaTelechu refers to Torah Mitzvahs. Loirak Beluchas HaChakukim. Not only on tablets of stone that were engraved. Ki Odom Tzarech Lava Davidose Gam Bechola Torah Mitzvahs Shatiyo Be'efen Shel Chukah. What's really being intimated is that our avodas Hashem, our commitment, our love, loyalty, and devotion to God should be in a manner of chakuka, of chik, of, of, of engraving, of oneness. That we should be totally and seamlessly and, 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 and in a profound communion way be one with the Torah Mitzvahs. To the point you can no longer divide between them. This is the meaning of the What was our original question? You can go, you can develop, talk about Maisa, action. How can you do a different action? Action is action is action. So now that we understand, because we're talking here about oneness, self-identifying with Torah in, an, in a way which is impossible to fathom or entertain any other reality. With the giver of the Torah, the one who instructs us on the mitzvahs. The fichoch dafke oz the question was, what do you mean halicha? What do you mean going? What do you mean developing? How could you develop? It's, it's just action. Actions don't change. And the answer is, no, no, no. Chakika doesn't just mean action. Chakika means that it becomes one with my soul. Chakika means it's engraved in my being. And when it's engraved in your being, ah, then there's the real halicha. Then you can really go, because God is infinite. Yes, my Yiddish cat is one with me. But since God is infinite, and there are infinite levels to divinity and infinite levels to godliness. So if I become one, self-identify in a seamless way with divinity and godliness, that means that I shed my reality. I become totally enmeshed and involved and committed and engraved, so to speak, into the reality of divinity that becomes my self-identity. And since God is limitless, there must be limitless level in how that grows and develops. Even though standing in the earlier level, he is totally, absolutely bound to God, according to whatever level he is. Nonetheless, even since God is infinite, then the person can go higher and yet higher. 
This is similar, similar in the in the in the in long the lines of what's explained elsewhere. See this: the kasher adam eved that kadosh baruch hu b'chol ma'idecha. When a person serves Hashem with all of his means, he knows b'chol avavcha with all your heart, b'chol nafshcha with all your soul. And then finally, b'chol ma'idecha, which means serious nefesh, giving everything away. So when a person serves Hashem b'chol ma'idecha with all of his means, all of his wherewithal, with with his essence, ha'ma'id shalach means ma'id lefi erke madrigase. Everybody's b'chol ma'idecha is different. Because everybody has different possibilities. So when you give it your all, and somebody else gives it their all, it's not one and the same. Why? Because everybody has different all. So b'chol ma'idecha represents giving everything. Beyond, beyond, beyond. Going any limitation, transcending everything at, at, at every, every single level. But that idea, which is transcendent of all levels, has many levels. Because it depends who you are. When you connect, when you transcend your existence, your entity entirely, then you connect to the essence of divinity. There's two ideas, two concepts being played out here. Aleph, number one. That in your ma'id, in your b'chal ma'idecha, you touch the true b'chal ma'idecha, you, tr- you touch the essence of divinity. And base number two, since when you give it all you got, then you connect to all God's got. Moving, it's understood. You can reach the mind, you can reach the true essence of God because you gave it all you got. Because you forgot about yourself and transcended yourself entirely, because you left yourself behind, that's how you're able to touch the essence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. You serve Hashem with your essence. That's how you touch the essence of Akadish Baruch Hubalachain in Utsarak Lamid Madrigasa. He shouldn't stay in the same place. On the contrary. El Lalis my love, my love. Continue to go higher, higher, and yet even higher. We're out of time. So good job, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Kadish Baruch Hu help us you go higher, higher, and yet higher. And be zeicha to the coming of Mashiach, the highest of the heights. Ben Heda will be a main note. Amen.